man and his faithfulness. I'm David Hammonds. Today we're asking the question that was asked by the proverb writer in chapter 20, verse 6. Who can find a faithful man? So Real Momentum as an organization exists to help you move your relationship with God, your relationship with your family, and your relationship to the church. None of these relationships in your life will have any power until you, as a man, humbly submit yourself to God and you begin developing your relationship with Him. So, we all know that there's a crisis in our culture um, and it's undeniable. There's plenty of evidence out there to show that there's considerable cultural breakdown attributed to men not fulfilling their God-given roles. We, you, men in general, we reject, we deny, we ignore any of the real active faith response to God, our families, and our church. We get lost in ourselves and the things that we do and the things that we want to accomplish. And a lot of times we lay aside those key relationships in our lives. God clearly gives in Scripture a design for us and the roles that we should carry out with uh, and in our lives. And he supplies all the tools that we need for faithfulness. He supplies all of the tools that we need for discipleship and for faithful disciple making. Uh, Real Momentum exists to engage, encourage, and equip. So we have the Holy Spirit and we have God's Word. Jesus is our high priest, so we can go directly to him for counsel and training. And the work of transforming us, that work is his. And it's only possible through his power. So Jesus has a plan. He demonstrated his plan to reach men. The careful part about this is that Satan, the devil, the devil also has a plan to reach men. So ask yourself the question, which one are you listening to? Which one is feeding you? Many of us, many of you, we, we attempt to achieve, we attempt to perform, uh, we attempt to, uh, attempt to accomplish apart from Jesus, apart from the Holy Spirit. We base our attempts on our own strength and our own merit. But if we're not right with God, we're likely to give wrong counsel when we're called upon. So let's, uh, let's start in Ezekiel. Um, Israel rejected God's glory and Ezekiel pronounced judgment. In his chapter 22, um, we find the judgment of Jerusalem, and Ezekiel brings the word of the Lord. And you'll see this on your, uh, in your books, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The judgment of Jerusalem and Ezekiel says that there was none faithful. So the good news is that even though Israel rejected God's glory, that it will be replaced by God's future glory. It's revealed in Jesus and in his second coming. So Let's look to Jesus. Let's see, let's see what his personality and uh, his actions, what they mean for us. So we'll follow along 
with your book, I'm going to take this section a little bit out of order, but you'll, it's all on the same page right there. You'll be able to follow along well. Um, take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. <clears throat> this is the chapter where um, Paul gives us a good and thorough definition of love. And then in verse 11, that's, this is the specific verse that we're on today, or right now, is verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, when I came into existence as a man, when I possessed certain characteristics of manhood, I gave up or I surrendered, I abolished, I brought to an end my childish ways. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. All right, so let's flip over to, should be just a couple pages for you. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 through 14. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. So there are several things that he's um, pushing us towards here. He says, and you can follow along in your book, he says to be watchful or carefully observant, attentive, awake, alert, not asleep. Stand firm in the faith, steadfast, secure, solidly in place, certain, on the wall, the hedge, in the breach, in the gap. Act like men, be courageous, show yourself a man, and be strong effective, not mild or weak. And then verse 14, he says it clearly, let all that you do be done with love. And like as we started in chapter 13 a moment ago, that gives you a good and thorough definition of love. And that's where Paul says it all has to start and finish. Let all that you be, let all that you do be done with love. And here's some examples of, um, where in the Bible they were searching for this faithful, for faithful men. Um, Moses and Joshua in Exodus 17, they were getting ready for battle. They needed to find some faithful men. Just like the verse we read in Ezekiel a few minutes ago, Ezekiel was seeking for just a single faithful man among them. In Nehemiah chapter 4, the men are posted. Uh, they're at their posts behind the wall, and their job was to fight for what they love. You know, that's and that's where God is calling us to to stand and fight for those that we love. And then Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. So this is where we start with trying to figure out what a real man is. And looking in your book, he gives an acrostic for the word real. So a real man, the first one, and you can fill in your blanks as we go. Uh, a real man rejects passivity. So what is passivity? It's the opposite of activity. But it's not a random or arbitrary uh, action. Um, we're talking about being intentional. So reject Passivity, he's calling us to activity, but it's intentional activity. Uh, an example in my own life, uh, at the end of, say, a, a long work day or a long work week, I enjoy sitting in my chair with my feet propped and time to just relax, just some me time. Everybody enjoys me time and free time. It's easy to be passive in that situation. 
you know, I don't always want to play with my kids. And, and when they were younger, the same way, the same thing. I, I didn't always want to play with them. I didn't uh, always want to play games or read to them or just even sometimes have a conversation with them about what's going on in their lives. Um, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be kids if you have kids or, or don't or if they're gone uh, if, if they've moved out but you it could also be with spending time with your neighbors or engaging other people in your lives uh, but a real man rejects passivity and when you're talking about spiritual training or investing spiritually in someone else's growth you might think that you some some guys are passive because they think that they lack the resources and training to really to really share with somebody but god has given us as believers he's given you the tools that are necessary um his word and the holy spirit uh, are what we must rely on and so many times we as parents as um leaders we outsource we outsource that spiritual training to religious professionals, but that's not God's plan. God's plan is for us to reject passivity, to be active in our families and active in our communities, and that uh, we are the ones responsible for those things. So the second, the letter E in real, um, a real man expects the greater reward. So we need to have the vision, uh, the vision to see the end or the completion, to be able to, in our mind, see the goal, to expect that greater reward and to believe God for it. The A is accepts responsibility. A real man accepts responsibility. We're not blamers. We don't make excuses. We're not victims. We own it and we move forward. And the L in real man, he leads courageously. Um, he leads cre courageously. And the root of courage is the word kur, which is heart. So leading courageously is leading with heart, not a quitter, able to battle, able to face resistance without, uh, even, even when you're frustrated. It's, it's war language, really. And we are called to be warriors and we're called to battle, but our battle isn't against people. Our battle is, is against the evil powers and principalities, but it's a battle for our families. It's a battle for our communities. So a real man rejects passivity, expects the greater reward, accepts responsibility, and leads courageously. Psalm 12 says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, and the faithful disappear or vanish from among the children of men. Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Who can find a faithful man? The next verse, verse 7, it is, it says that the righteous, who walks in uh, the righteous who walks in integrity, his his lineage is blessed. His children will be blessed. So the real essence of manhood is ultimately taking responsibility. So... Going to the next page, we're going to take, a, take some time and look at uh, some of the clear direction that God gives about um, the roles of an overseer, uh, the roles for uh, a biblical, uh, God-honoring, Jesus-following um, shepherd overseer. And you might, you might interpret this as... Uh, the roles for pastors, or you might interpret it as the role of uh, a godly man in the body. So let's go that direction right now. So we're in 1 Timothy um, chapter 3, uh, verses 2 through 5. <clears throat> a bishop then must be blameless, or an overseer, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, 
not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he care for the church of God? So let's look mostly at verse uh, 2 and the one little phrase, able to teach. Um, so lots of direction here, lots of guidance here, but let's, let's hone in on just that one little piece. Are you able to teach? So this isn't asking if you have a university degree or if you have a seminary uh, degree. It's asking, it means, are you uh, spiritually and emotionally mature to a point where you can engage and with controlled spirit advise and correct with wisdom. Um, you, can't, um, you can't teach or, or offer any real spiritual influence to, um, to somebody when you are disengaged yourself and when you're loud and angry and out of control and, and I can speak about this from firsthand experience. I, I'm challenged by teaching and training and discipling my family with, without losing my cool or while maintaining healthy and mature engagement. It's a challenge to, to do these kinds of things with a clear and cool head. Um, a lot of times when you're excited or impassioned about something, then you, know, you, you lose your cool. Um, so the truth is that, and I'll say this again, that when you are, when you're disengaged from those who you're trying to reach or uh, when you're loud and angry or out of control, you don't have any, um, you don't have any equity in the relationship to really gain ground. So this whole section in 1 Timothy 3 is really good. I encourage you to spend some time in there to understand um, how and what God says about manhood there. And let's flip over to uh, Titus 1, just a few pages over as well. It's right after 2 Timothy. Uh, Titus 1, verses 5 through 9. Um, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking, and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. If, <clears throat> if a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of dissipation or insubordination, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict so verse 5 Paul said you should set in order the things that are lacking so he says to put what remained back into order. So putting these things that are lacking, and lacking, uh, you could translate it unfinished, incomplete, things that are missing or failed. Putting those things back into order. That was the job in Crete for Titus. Bring it back into order, that which had failed or was incomplete. So what is in your life that would fall into that category. What, what is lacking? What is unfinished? What's incomplete or missing or failed? So just like Paul said to Titus that it's time to get these things back in order. And you, as a man, you have some sort of headship. You have some responsibility in this task. In your life, in your church, in your family, in yourself. 
Um, so following now on your book, 15, 15 discussion points, I'll encourage you to spend some time with your table group. If you're not getting together with your table group, maybe reach out to one or two of your guys that are in your group and just spend some time, pick, pick up one of these or five of these or 10 of these and just talk through them. Uh, good, great talking points for men and issues with men. So let's just uh, run through them quickly. Um, males are born while men are forged. So we're not just a sum of our parts. We're not just head and shoulders, knees and toes. Uh, that doesn't make you a man. Um, we're made by our experiences, by our circumstances, and even then we're transformed by the Holy Spirit. The second one, a man is responsible for all of his choices. You, you can't keep a victim mentality. You can't keep making excuses, giving reasons why you're not the responsible one. Men are responsible. Three, the only constant in a man's world is change. So change is always happening. Four, every man is of infinite worth. We're made in the image of God. Uh, clearly in Genesis and the creation accounts, um, we are made in God's image. Number five, a man has the courage to do what is necessary. And I mentioned a few minutes ago that how, how much I like my me time, my free time. So as men, as leaders, you know, we really have got to give up those rights. We've got to give up the entitlements that we think we have for free time and me time. And we've got to do what needs to be done. We've got to have the courage to do what is necessary. Number six, a man is dedicated to continuous learning. With humility, uh, you know, you've got to admit that you don't know it all. Uh, you've got to come to a point where you can let yourself be teachable. <clears throat> Seven, manhood demands a courage, uh, excuse me, manhood demands a courageous self-honesty. So who are you before God? Number eight, a man shapes his world. We are all influencers. Um, we all have we all have a circle of influence. Uh, ask yourself what what does your circle of influence look like? Who who is in there? Who do you have? Um, who do you have influence over? Uh, and you know, you might be a good influence or you might be a bad influence. But either way, you have a circle of influence and you will shape your world. Number nine, a man predicts his future by creating it. Um, you have some power in your life. You're not just a victim. Number 10, a man accepts that to live is to be challenged. Um, our lives are full of challenges. It, they're not meant to be problem free. Number 11, a man never stands alone unless he's making a stand. Number 12, a man knows when to humbly face his errors and the sooner the better. 13, a man keeps on trying until he gets it right. I heard somebody famous say, try not, do or do not. There is no try. So. My number 13 says a man keeps on doing until he gets it right. Number 14, a man lives by a set of standards and principles. I would say that that's the word of God. Number 15, a man submits to an authority beyond himself. And that really is where he has to start. The man has to start by humbly laying down himself and uh, beginning that relationship with God. So men, step up, be strong and courageous. 
Uh, five points here, leaders rise to the occasion. There is no pill for courage. Leadership is a heart issue. God didn't make you a leader to respond to stuff all day. God made you to move people. Again, he made you to influence. And five, spiritual leadership is moving people onto God's agenda. And Henry Blackaby said that. So, none of us are where we ought to be. None of us is where we should be. Um, Brennan Manning says that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you unconditionally as you are and not as you should be. So, walk in that. Let yourself be forgiven. Let yourself be transformed. Lean into, to the, into God and let Him do that transforming work in your life. So, take those 15 points again seek out some guys or even even one just one other person if if that's the only opportunity that you have uh, those 15 points are wide open for further discussion and it would be good time spent um, we each need a vision for what a disciple looks like jesus gives us that uh, example we've seen some of that today in what paul has written and so not only having the vision for what it looks like, but we need to be able to articulate it. We need to be able to spell out what it looks like to be a man and what it looks like to train others to be godly men. So let's finish today. Let's finish this session, this discussion, with the same question that we started with. Um, Proverbs 20, verse 6. Who can find a faithful man? And it's my prayer that the answer will be different than the answer that Ezekiel found in chapter 22 in Jerusalem. <laughs>